Click the link now to subscribe. The reminder was for myself is a live a life with a purpose. And what's the purpose of my existence on this dunya is not the amassing of money and running after careers and work and business and that a empty life. That's the philosophy of other people, fi dunya hasanat wa akhirati hasanat. That there are two different hasanats, they think they live a good life do a little bit of good and then maybe they maybe have a house in paradise waiting for them. And only Allah come into our life and teach, mm, that's not a intelligent way and you would never do that in your dunya. Let me just work a little bit, maybe somebody will have a house waiting for me in Kokutlam. It'll just happen. So only Allah come and say, no Allah gave us this world and this opportunity to make our home in paradise. He gave us, why are we here on this earth was to make our home in paradise. Not enjoy yourself, do whatever you want, amass whatever you want and then hope in the end, hope in the end your sayat is not high and that Allah's rahmah is strong and that you may have some place in this paradise. Anyone who does odds and numbers and ratios that's a horrific bet against yourself. But use, use your dunya as a means in which to buy your akhirah. And so they came into our lives and taught us that you have to have a purpose, you have to have something in life that you hold with a respect and an esteem higher than yourself. But more than any person, any human that what is it that you hold in such a high esteem and that you're going to live a life of tashrif in, in, in Farsi we call tashrif and I'm sure in Arabic is that you carry upon your head. That I'm going to, to hold something as a symbol in my life greater than myself and must be from the Divine because there's no human that I'm going to respect like that. It has to be from the Divinely Presence and that my life will be to hold that respect and hold that love, hold that ihtiram, hold that purpose. And then they come and teach, then if you understood what we understood then make this a means in which to buy your akhirah. And then you will have had a sound judgment and you're an intelligent person then. Because you understood to make this a means in which to get my palace and akhirah. The Ya Rabbi my life is for tahzim and nabi How are you going to glorify Allah In our way, in this madhab of love, Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, the only way to make Allah happy is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad قُلْ إِنِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَتَّبِعُونِي then Yuhibukumullah, then Allah will grant you divine love. If you're searching on how am I going to make Allah happy? I'll do this, I'll, I'll give money to, to stranded animals, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do all kind of ridiculous things. And they say, no, no, it's very clear. The bullseye is tahzim al Nabi How to, to glorify the magnificent status of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't you see Hezb shaitan doing the opposite? Shaitan never comes out against Islam and Allah. He comes against Sayyidina Muhammad Because they don't come against Allah, they all believe in Allah. But they don't want is your Muhammadiyoon, don't follow Sayyidina Muhammad don't follow his laws, his, his orders, his teachings. Shaitan is showing us the target by law of opposite. Why he's so interested in making cartoons to make us angry? Because he's doing the polar opposite of the reality and Allah says, they plan, I plan better. You should have figured out there must be a secret why he's going after that. 
Why is he trying to attack the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad It must be a secret. So then our life is very clear, is the reverse, pull that flag and lift it very high. And that wherever we go in life it's about tahzim al-Nabi We want to have Mawlid al-Nabi and we want to be ambassadors of the reality of this beautific, this beautific teaching. Ambassadors of muhabbat, ambassadors of, of understanding and knowledges. The knowledges in which Prophet brought it takes everyone out of darkness. While these crazy people are teaching on YouTube about alien encounters and alien origins and everything coming from an alien. You, re you read and you watch a show and say, where do these people have no brain? How'd they get this stuff? Because Allah left them to be jahal and in ignorance. And how Sayyidina Muhammad brought us everything. We watch the TV, ah, the greatness of Prophet he told us, this is the jinn, what an alien. Like somebody coming from a different planet, somebody coming in a spaceship late at night, taking people out of… They're all in your home already. They don't need a ship, they already live there and all night long they're touching you. <laughs> They're big on molestation, that's all they do, they're not here to be your friends. All this taught by Sayyidina Muhammad in our Holy Qur'an. Any subject you want to know about Prophet brought it for us. This is the inheritance of a great father. This is the inheritance of a great father who left everything for his nation. Knowledges that will take you from every darkness, not from that time but from beginning of time to the last days on this earth, we are equipped with the knowledges of what will happen, how they will happen and what is the solution for whatever is happening on this earth. That's the greatness, the greatness of the message of Prophet and while people are struggling to find and you watch these movies how they, they put themselves in a situation and they're waiting to see the miracle of Allah and for God to appear and God's miracle to appear and it doesn't appear and they get frustrated and run away. Because Allah's miracle is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And if you want a miracle and you want to experience a miracle, Love the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad be with his ahbab and their whole lives are miraculous. Their homes, their jobs, the rizq that flow to them from nowhere, no one understands where it comes from. Not a sickness, not a difficulty, not a person without need. If they follow our way, if you give and take your own, that's your own deal. But if you come and you follow these ahbab never in difficulty. What Allah promised, they neither fear nor grief. They fear no one because Allah with them. And how they know Allah with them? Because they witness the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad in every moment of their life. And fear? No. Grief? What to be sad about? Allah with them. And Allah with all of them who love them. And that's why Allah described, I'm with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Saliheen. All four must be in that room and Allah promise, I'll be with them. And these are the best of people to be with. Allah's not with just Nabi'een. So it means your love has to be complete. If you're not loving Siddiqeen, if you're not loving shuhada and there's no saliheen from amongst you, your group is missing something, Allah's not there. And that's why your answers are not coming, your prayers are not being answered, your difficulties and mushkilats are not being taken away. You have maybe one part of a whole formula and that's why the turuq come and teach. Hey, if you want the reality of Nabi'een then you must have been connected to these big Siddiqeen. Who are your turuqs? Who's your, your shaykh and the lineage of your shaykh and which of these 
sahabi he's taking his lineage and his reality from. And if those sahabi are, are sending their fires and their teaching and their turuqs into your heart then many of your mashaykh must be shuhada, mushahada that they can see and their hearts are open. If Allah love them enough to open their hearts their room are all salihin just because of the fires that comes through their heart and through their eyes. We said in this nafs al safiyya when you start to understand radiya, mardiya wa safiyya their soul is in Divine Presence in a continuous tajalli of Ismallah. Allah's names and essences and attributes are continuously dressing that soul and that soul radiates all those realities and like an email comes down to its physical soul and radiates that barakah everywhere. When Allah says He's dressing something in that reality wherever its, its uh, dunya form is going is a reflection of that dress, it radiates from that dress. And that's why they describe where awliyaullah go is Allah's ni'mat. Rain comes because their presence, barakah comes because their presence, every rizq comes because their presence, azab is kept away because their presence. Allah described, how I could punish you and your people or any group of people when you are amongst them. Who was amongst them? These Ahbab and Nabi they keep the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Ruhaniyat of Prophet must always be with them. How Allah are going to bring azab on them? And their teaching with that love make istighfar and that's why the second part. And they were repenting because anyone who has the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is continuously taught, make maghfirah, make your tawbah, make your repentance. It's a cleaning. And that's what Allah describing, how I'm going to punish them. So understood that these souls, these blessed souls, the radiating light of Allah the blessings of Allah upon their soul is what brings all these blessings into an area. So then the, these are not regular associations and these are not regular teachings. This is a way in which to reach that reality. For the people who understood that make something holy in your life. You make a goal in, in this world they teach you for work, make a goal and achieve it. Mm. Oh for akhirah make a goal too, that I want to hold something dear to me more precious than anything of my existence and I want to love it more than I love myself. Do everything and give everything and support everything for that reality. And that reality for us and from our shaykh's teachings was tahzim al nabi Every day wake up, how am I going to glorify the magnificent status of Sayyidina Muhammad today? What am I going to do to, to raise that and to be a part of that? They have a goal in their life. That I'm going to go to the mawlid, I'm going to go to the zikr, I'm going to support the zikr, I'm going to try to spread that teaching, spread that love, I'm going to work hard so that I can achieve and from that achieving Ya Rabbi oh, I want to conduct a mawlid, I want to support a mawlid, I want to do all these things. Give me a rizq in which to do those things but not give me a rizq in which I can put it into bank, die and give it all to my kids. Although my kids are here they want that. It's not the only goal in life, we have to have a goal. So we set a goal and then we see how we're going to achieve that goal. So that every day we feel like we're waking up for a reason, otherwise we don't understand why we're waking up anymore. You're waking up just to pay bills or this was I have to give me some strength Ya Rabbi so that I can do more. I want to meet Sayyidina Muhammad whether in this dunya or my last breath, what am I going to greet him with? That I did something good, I did some sort of mawlid, I continuously had a mawlid, I always gave out food, go into your area and give out food to the poor for the sake of the name of Sayyidina Muhammad And we can think of millions of things, if you can write, write articles, if you have tech knowledge and computer knowledges, come and help our da'wah. 
if you have abilities, you have resources, you have finances, so many things to be done. And that every night you sleep understanding, no, that I made my dunya my means in which to achieve my akhirah. I did not make them too different. That my dunya became my only reason to achieve my akhirah. And every day thinking, Ya Rabbi that make my akhirah to be stronger, give me a himmah and strength. And when my akhirah is ready for me and Allah is ready with His servants says, your palace is set for you. My beloved come back home, your time is finished. No Allah don't take everyone, anyone because it's a rahmah. Knowing your house not ready where I'm going to take you, into punishment you've done nothing. When Allah was just satisfied with His servant of course He loves him and brings him back says, now come back your home is ready with us. You're sitting amongst people for what? We have a purpose in our life. Give us a, a, a peaceful and sakina, a, a tranquility when we sleep. We pray that Allah open the reality of Mawlid the Nabi As soon as you come in the attendance of the milad and make a life of milad the Nabi Allah opens a victorious light within your heart and your soul. That as soon as you praise and come for that reality, the light of Sayyidina Muhammad begins to enter into your soul and into your wujud, into your being. And that victorious light of Prophet is the one that fights for you, is the one mubashiran and one nadiran, not from outside, but shahidan that Allah sends Nur Muhammad fiikum that he becomes and enters into your reality. As soon as you acknowledge the milad the Nabi you opened up a key. We talked with the, the gentleman before, if you think the key in Islam is always the obvious, it's wrong. The key is something you don't pay any respect to it and there must be a mifta, a key of realities. You know the key for wilayat is not somebody you may think that he knows Arabic good or he's like this or he's like that. Look to a shaykh and you say, oh I think this shaykh is a pious shaykh. If you don't see him using this Sainthood has not entered into his heart because they know the secret of this miswak, something small but huge. This has to a tremendous reality into the heart and the energy of the heart. It's not the equivalent of toothbrush and toothpaste, had nothing to do. The du'a of this was, not please Ya Rabbi grant me shiny teeth, nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi, not my teeth to be shiny. If you see shaykh without that he did not reach wilayat because that's a key. Anybody who wants the key for their heart check your underwear. Oh what, what are you talking about? What's shaykh talking about? If you don't have an ihtiram to make sure that your private is clean after you washed in the facility and that you're going to meet your Lord najis and dirty. How anything sincere can open upon that servant? They think the washing of their body, their face and throwing water all over them in, inside the, in the wudu area and make everywhere to be wet and have to be repaired. They think it's external, let people see, I'm going to wet myself a lot. No, no the key to wudu was what? Check the shorts. If you took enough care to make sure that you're clean privately, only you and your Lord know how you're clean. That, Ya Rabbi make me to be clean to the best of my ability, I have a meeting with you. So the secret for wudu was your private wudu, not the one that everybody sees you with. And Islam is filled with these realities, that it's a key. When you understood the key from these awliyaullah, and then we understood how to reach towards Allah's satisfaction. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.